Hey there, welcome back. This is part two out of four of my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript crash course. So this is the video where we finally dive into code and we type some stuff from scratch. Remember, this is our goal here to make this salmon colored website that has photos of my cat, all circular photos done with CSS. The photos themselves are actually squares. I can click and we get some new content loaded with JavaScript whenever I click. And then it loops back through the same set of photos. So we're going to begin with writing the HTML in this video. Before we can do any of that though, I'm going to get you set up with a place to write the HTML. So you have a lot of options. You could use any old text editor. If you are on a Mac, you can use uh, text edit on a PC. If you wanted to, you can use a uh, notepad. You can download any sort of text editor. The one that I recommend and the one I'll be using is called sublime text. The link is in the description. It's free. And it's showing download for Mac on my computer because it knows that I have a Mac, but you can also download it, download it for PC, uh, for Windows and for Linux, as well as OS X. So if you'd like, go ahead and download this. The other option I'll show you is CodePen. So CodePen, I, saw, I showed in the last video, it's an online editor. It's not really a place for serious development. It's not where most people would create full applications, but it's a place to share things and very quickly type code. So if you go to codepen.com, the link is also in the description, go to create new pen. The instructions I'll give you is that in this video, all the code you type will go over here in the HTML tab. All the CSS from the next video will go here and all the JavaScript will go here. Overall, it will be a better experience if you follow along with sublime text, but if for some reason you're unable to download it or you're not in a situation where you can install software on your machine, then you could use CodePen instead. Okay, the next order of business is to get you the starter code. So every video, the next three videos at least, will have a starter code and then also a solution or final version of our app as we go through each video. So this is what the starter code looks like for this video. You can use the download link to get it. There are three files, one for HTML, one for JavaScript, and one for CSS. And you'll notice they all have different file extensions. And then there's a folder called images and this just has six images of my cat. So we're gonna use those to make the site. Once you have these downloaded, we're gonna start with index.html in this video. You have a couple of ways of opening it in Sublime. On a Mac, you can right click, go to open with Sublime Text. If you just double click, it will open it in your browser and try and show you the web page, the rendered HTML, but we're trying to edit it. So open with Sublime Text, or you can click and drag it down to the Sublime Text icon in your dock on a Mac, or in Sublime Text, you can go File, Open, and then navigate to it. However you end up opening it in Sublime, you should see this. What we have here is called HTML boilerplate. So anytime you make a new HTML application, it always has this. And we're not gonna spend much time going into the details of every line because it's there every single time. I'm gonna focus on the exciting stuff. But just so you know, if you type the word HTML inside of a .html file in Sublime and you hit tab, it automatically fills this entire thing out for you because that's how commonly used it is. Same thing in CodePen actually, HTML tab. Okay, so this is our structure that every HTML application we create or every HTML file needs to follow. And it's up to us to fill in the blanks. And the first easiest thing we can fill in is right here, a title for our web page. This is not gonna be a title that's you know, rendered on the page itself. It's what we'll see in the tab of the browser of each window. This is sublime, but let's type um, my cat, or you can choose whatever you'd like, and we save the file. Command S on a Mac. Then I'm gonna go back and open this file up. So I'm gonna double click, and this is what I get. An empty page, but if I look at the tab, it says my cat. And if I right click and I click on inspect or view page source, let me make this larger for you. You can see this is our file. This is the underlying HTML and this is what it resulted in, my cat. All right, now let's actually work on the contents of our application. So what we have here is just a couple of items. There's this big text up top that says, this is my new cat. We're not worrying about styling, just the actual structure. Then there's a photo, then we have a button and then we have a little bit of text down here. And other than that, I mean, there's nothing else. The rest is style and JavaScript. So back in Sublime, let's start with that text at the top that just says, this is my new cat. 
okay? So if I just do this, we're not going to get anything great. If I refresh the page in my browser, this is what I see now. This is my new cat, but it's not big. So to make it big, there's a couple of options. And the tag we're going to use is called the H1 tag. So all the tags, as you can see, the existing ones that we're not going to talk about, they all follow the same syntax where we have this uh, bracket and then the name of the tag and then a closing bracket. And most of them have an opening and a closing bracket where the trailing tag or the closing tag has that slash. But not every tag does. As you can see, this doc type tag doesn't. And we'll see in a minute that the image tag doesn't either. So these tags, if you didn't watch the first video, I recommend you do that, but they serve to uh, encode structure. They surround our information and say what this is, how it should be treated by the browser. So if I put, this is my new cat inside that H1, this tells my browser, please make this a header. There are six levels of headers, by the way. So I will duplicate this. I use Command Shift D. And I made this one an H2 just by changing that, that number. If I go back, make sure you save and you refresh, you can see I now have two headers, one that's large and another that's slightly less large, but it, they're still bigger than what they were before. So that's H1 and H2. Like I said, it goes down to H6 for the smallest header. Okay, so I'll get rid of this extra header. Next, let's uh, skip over the image for, for now. It's the, the hardest one, if you will. It's not that bad, but let's actually work on the button. So there is a tag called button and it works just the same way where we have an opening and a closing. And if you get tired of typing that, or you can see actually Sublime auto completed that for me as soon as I did that slash. You can also just type button and hit tab. And that's one of the main reasons people like working with editors like Sublime is that this gets really tiresome to type all over and over and over. Okay, so inside this button, we just specify the text we want to show up. And I think I had get next photo. You can put whatever you'd like here, but whatever we put here will show up in the button. So if I save and refresh, there we go. We have a button and it doesn't do anything, but it is a button. Okay, next let's add the, the text below. And that text, we could just put it as just plain text like this. She current, I think I said she currently has no name. Please help me name her. But this is not a great idea. If we go back and we look at it, you'll see, first of all, it's on the same line as that button. And if I right click on it and I go to inspect in Google Chrome, at least, I'll make this larger. I actually have this little inspector that lets me explore the elements and I can open and close them. So we have the head with a title, then inside the body, we have a button, but then after that, there's just this block of text with no tags or elements inside of it. Instead of doing this, we want to wrap this content in something. It just should be like a, a paragraph of text. And fortunately, there's a paragraph tag. It's just called the P tag. So I'll do the same thing and move my text in between those two brackets. And what this will do is not only wrap it in a paragraph tag, but by making it a paragraph, it actually adds space afterwards. And if I save and refresh, it now is on its own line just by me wrapping it in a paragraph. And it's as simple as that. So finally, let's actually add the image tag. So image is a little bit different. First of all, the tag name is IMG, like this, IMG. And if you just type image in Sublime and hit tab, you'll see it doesn't give you the closing tag. Like if I do a P and hit tab, it gives me opening and closing. Image is what's known as a self-closing tag. It does not have, there's no text that we provide. There's nothing in the middle. So instead, it's a single tag, but there's this attribute called source, SRC. And we're not gonna dive into attributes very much, but certain tags have attributes, additional information you can add. And this one for an image is really important because this is where we specify what image to show. You could put any link to any image that you want in here, but I'm gonna work with these images that I provided. And if we go back to the starter code, we're working in this file, index.html. The images are in a folder called IMGS images. And inside, you can see there's six. We'll just pick one. I like this one, kitty underscore bed dot JPEG. So we have to remember that we have to type that name exactly. And also, 
we need to type the images folder because we're here. We have to access through the images folder to this file. And the way we do that is by typing images slash kitty bed dot JPEG. So if we had another folder that they were inside of called cat, we would do that. If they were in the same folder as my HTML file, I don't need the image part or images, but they are in that folder. And this is just going to give us a single image. So I'm going to save, go back here and refresh. And there we go. This massive photo. Look at that face. What a cutie pie. So grumpy. This is the image. And that's all that HTML is going to do for us is just put the image as it is. It's a big photo that I gave you and it just makes it take up as much space as it needs to. So in the next video, we'll learn how to wrangle it, how to control the size, as well as things like color, how this button looks, uh, you know, all the, the style information is coming up next when we talk about CSS. But this is all of the base elements. If you look at the page, we have everything. We have this header up top. We have the image tag. We have the button. They all look different. And we have the paragraph of text. So before I go, if you're curious about HTML tags, I've only shown you, what, a couple, four or five, plus the boilerplate that we didn't really talk about. But on this page that I've also linked to, it's called MDN, Mozilla Developer Network, the HTML elements reference. You can see every element that there is. So you can learn about the HTML element or the title element, which we filled in. The title element defines the title of the document shown in the browser's title bar or on each page's tab. And they show you an example, and that's a very simple one, but there is a bunch more. If you wanted to learn more about headers, you can read here. The main thing I just wanted to show you is how many tags there are. So there are a lot of them. I'd say there's a subset of like 20 to 30 that are used all the time. And then there's a couple that I just have never had to use ever that always surprised me when I remember they exist. So that's all I'll do for new elements. This is just a crash course, but just know that you can see all of them here in a reference. One last thing before I wrap up here, up top I had this comment and I explained comments in the last video briefly. If I type command slash on that line or control slash on a PC, it is no longer commented out and this is invalid HTML. If I comment it out though, it's totally fine. So you can get rid of this line. You can add your own comments wherever you'd like. And to do that, let's say if you wanted to explain what source is, you can type a note. I like to type command slash first, which gives me the comments, or you could type this manually. I cannot remember the last time I typed that myself. I always just type command slash and then add a note. I could do something like this. Source is an attribute, specifies which image to show. Just a note, there's no functionality, it's not rendered. It's purely for other developers or yourself to just understand what's happening or to write a note like this. Okay, so in this video, we saw how to write some basic HTML. We saw a couple tags. We didn't go into the details of the boilerplate here. If you type HTML again, just remember, every document you work in with HTML will always have this. And you write the bulk of your tags inside the body. That's everything that shows up on the page. All right, next we'll work on adding some style.